Well, hello and welcome to Producer Dan. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Today we're talking about Second Light. This is a very fun and powerful sequencer by 510K Arts and the music producer Alex Kidd. This is now available in Pro Tools with your 2024.10 update, along with a lot of other very good third-party plugins like Contact and Bleece Arpeggiator. I've done videos on the Bleece Arpeggiator and Contact 8, so check those out. So Second Light is a pared down version of the full version sequencer. It's very fun to use. You can control all these different parameters, the pitch, velocity. It has a CC lane, a continuous controller lane that you can assign to any knob on your synthesizer. To use Second Light, just open a instrument track and place Second Light at the top and you'll find Second Light under MIDI Plugins. Once you have Second Light in place, just place any virtual instrument or synthesizer directly underneath Second Light and that will control that synthesizer. And today I'm using Vacuum, which is also included free in Pro Tools. This has been in Pro Tools since 2008. I did a video on this one too, so check that out. Um, this is a monophonic synthesizer and this works perfectly with Second Light. So you could uh, go ahead and choose any of the presets here or make your own sound. I've chosen a bass sound called Massive. You control the gate here at the top. So it can either, you know, close that note down or, or open it up. And then you have uh, the hold feature, which continues the note to the next note. And then you have pitch and you can control the pitch range over here. You can make that as small or as large as you want. Right now I have it set pretty large from the A sharp octave one all the way up to A sharp octave three, but you could change that to a much more narrow uh, range if you wanted. And velocity. Uh, you can change the value of the velocity from 127, that's the highest, all the way down to zero. And in order to change any of these, it's uh, very simple. You just click and hold down and you can draw any line that you want. But right now I'm just wanting it to kind of correspond uh, to the notes that are playing here. <laughs> And uh, the CC feature is one of my favorites here. CC stands for Continuous Controller. So it will control uh, any controllable aspect or parameter on your synthesizer. So now I have it programmed uh, to CC75. And if we come over here to our synthesizer and right click on our parameter here, the cutoff parameter, you can see the CC value is 75. And that's the cutoff value of the low pass filter on the synthesizer. I kind of have it working uh, in conjunction with velocity and the pitch as well. So they're all working together to make this pattern. And any of these parameters uh, have their own CC value. So you just Look and see what number the value is, and then come over here and change the value. And if we come down here, we have the clock, which changed the timing. All right, and we can add some swing, either positive 100, or negative 100. 
And we can change the octave. And this is important too. This is a uh, scale. And right now I have it set to C minor. And so it's only going to use these notes that are in the C minor scale. And you can change the scale here. And it has all of these different modes, the major, minor, Dorian. So it only uses uh, the keys that are in that particular mode. And over here is the patterns. And you have 12 different programmable patterns. I have programmed 11 of these. I've left uh, eight blank. So we could do that together in just a second. <laughs> And I did it deliberately so they all sound like they're in the same song. Something else I want to mention here, let's go back to our parameters uh, starting at the top. Here are your presets. They have quite a few, some different artists. Alex Kidd, who is the uh, developer of this or co-developer. Here you can save your own presets. Here's your undo and redo button. You can change the number of steps in the sequencer. And this would be very handy if you had the full version because you have a lot more uh, rows. And you can do that separately, row per row, which we'll get into in just a moment. And this is very handy. This came in very handy to me when I was making this song. This is the nudge feature where you can move this uh, back and forth. <laughs> If you have a nice rhythm and you want to work it into your song as a pattern, you can move that around. So right now I have the pitch set very deliberately here in all of my patterns. Kind of doing a variation of that same sound in different ways. So you can be very deliberate if you want, or uh, you can roll the dice here. So let's go to number eight, because this is blank. And uh, for the gate, I'm going to roll the dice. And for the hold, I'm going to roll the dice. And for pitch, I'll roll the dice. And for velocity, and for the CC value. All right, I'm going to change the pitch values here because I have the pitch range set very high. Uh, so it's going very low and kind of inaudible. So to give it a chance, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and move those up to an audible spot. Okay, and the CC is closing up, so I'm going to open that in places. And velocity. So that would kind of work with what we have here. We could work that into the song. Here's number seven. So with some finessing, we could work that uh, a little closer into some a pattern that would work uh, better with a song. So I want to come to number seven here because this is very important. You can see that I have shortened the lane for the gate to eight, so it'll go through kind of half the sequence. And for the hold button, I brought it down to seven. So every time it goes through, it's off one, so it's going to be more randomized. And I've done the same here in the pitch lane. I brought that down to five. And the velocity, I set some nice velocities that I like, but I have 
brought this down to uh, step seven. My CC value is nine. So those are all kind of odd numbers, and they're working to create this, uh, this kind of randomizing sequence that still goes nicely with the song. <laughs> So it's kind of like rolling the dice, but very specific dice. And so, like I said, I made uh, patterns. Uh, this holds up to 12 different patterns. In each one, kind of coordinates with the other one. And that's very easy to do. Uh, as you make your patterns, you can right click on them copy them, and then paste them to another pattern. We'll paste that pattern here. So 10 and 8 are now the same. So since it matches pattern 10, I can make changes to this pattern, uh, and it'll still coordinate with our other patterns in the song. We can just make some, some quick changes. Maybe take this one down to so it matches the one next to it. An F2. F2 is kind of a good note to have uh, with the A sharp. Maybe take this down, take this one out, and take this one down. So the velocity and the gates maybe kind of move the cutoff knob in the CC controller. Okay, so it's similar to 10. Here's 10. We could probably do a little bit more there. Maybe carry the note over here. Yeah. So now it's a pattern that goes very well with the other patterns that we have. All right, so now let's take a look and see how we can make these patterns play in your DAW. So here at the bottom, uh, this will trigger the patterns with the MIDI notes in your DAW or on a keyboard, starting at C0. First of all, you want to make sure that uh, notes is selected here. Here's C0, and here is uh, a MIDI note on C0, so that's going to play pattern 1. And it'll move to the next pattern, which is C-sharp, and then the next one, and the next one. So it'll go, you know, 1 through 12. Actually, I'm going to move this one up, since we have now have a pattern on number 8. It's no longer blank. <laughs> Pattern one, two. All right, and by the way, uh, I have a drum track playing in the background that works uh, the same way. Um, I actually have boom working here, and this works from C3, either on your keyboard or in your DAW. Uh, here is C3 here at the bottom, and it goes all the way up to here. So again, it plays uh, the pattern depending on the MIDI note that's triggered. So that's pattern five. It'll move to pattern six. All right.
website. And uh, if you want to know more about Boom, I've done a nice video on that. So check that out. So that is Second Light, a very powerful and fun to use sequencer. Now available for you to use free of charge in Pro Tools. So thank you again for checking out the video. I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care. Thank you.